Last month on November 18th, we got introduced to Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, the ninth generation of the Pokemon franchise and the first ever fully open world Pokemon game experiences. These games are absolutely fantastic and today I want to take some time to look at them in depth and review them for you guys here today. Greetings my comrades and welcome back to Zonalith. If you guys couldn't already tell, this is my review of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Now, I just want to get a few things out of the way. First of all, sorry if I sound a little weird, I am a little sick. And second of all, this video is going to be completely unscripted because I feel the more natural the review is, the better my thoughts are going to be. So that's what we're going to be doing for today's video. This video is going to have several different categories that I'm going to be talking about, mainly graphics and performance, music, Pokemon, the Paldea region itself, the story, and overall enjoyability of the game. But that being said, I don't want to waste any more of your time, let's jump right into the world of the Paldea region. Now, I'm not someone who likes to be negative about Pokemon games, so I'm going to get this out of the way first, but the graphics and performance of Scarlet and Violet are not very good at all. Now, from a graphical sense, it's something that I can kind of excuse when it comes to Pokemon. Pokemon has never really been this huge graphical series. It's never done things like Zelda or Xenoblade on the Switch. It doesn't, it doesn't look like that. And that's because Game Freak, for the longest time, had been working on handheld consoles instead of home consoles. They're not used to it yet. While I believe Pokemon should have better graphics, and I believe we should expect better graphics, and I don't think it's necessarily something we can really fully criticize Game Freak for, but it is something I believe it is worth mentioning. The graphics are not fantastic at all, but they do the job, and some areas of Paldea actually look quite nice, such as Mezagoa, and just some other regions around the area. I think the region looks fine, it does the job. My main issue is with performance, and that's, let's be honest here guys, the, the performance for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is just not acceptable at all. I mean, the amount of glitches that people were having when the game was first releasing, even if those glitches are starting to be patched now, it doesn't change the fact that when the game released, these, the game had all these different bugs and glitches. The frame rate was really, really bad. When I was playing the game, I experienced some glitches, nothing game breaking, but still glitches that took my immersion out of the game. And it just, it really sucked. It really just sucked that I was super excited for this game. And when I got my hands on it, it felt almost broken in a sense. But I don't fully blame Game Freak. I really just more so blame the Pokemon Company International, the higher ups at Nintendo who wanted the game to be their holiday release, to get it out every year, to get a Pokemon game out every year. And I believe, while I understand that they want to do the three-year generation thing, I believe in this case, it was really, really dumb. Earlier this year, we got Pokemon Legends Arceus, which, by the way, is an absolutely fantastic game. I love Legends Arceus. But the thing is, we already had Legends Arceus for this year. They could have easily put that as a November release and delay Scarlet and Violet till next November. But no, they decided they're going to release both games this year, which I believe is kind of dumb because not only would that November release for Legends give Legends more time to be just a better game overall, but an extra year of development could not have only improved the graphics of Scarlet and Violet, but also fixed a lot of the performance issues. And then when the game came out, if it were to come out in 2023, I believe it would just be a much better product. And I really do blame the Pokemon Company International for just not giving Game Freak the time they need to make these mainline Pokemon games. Okay, now onto something a bit more positive. Let's talk about the music in this game because Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has amazing music. A lot of really, really awesome tracks, and I believe things from the overworld theme to many of the different battle themes are just absolutely awesome, and they're really, really cool too. So I'm gonna take this moment to just play a few of the tracks that really stood out to me when I was playing the game, and then we'll move on to the next category. Take a listen.
Next category, let's talk about the Pokemon. So Pokemon has always been about Pokemon. It's always been about the creatures and Scarlet and Violet has a ton of brand new Pokemon. And I know a lot of people are a little bit mixed on these designs. A lot of people seem to really like the Gen 9 designs. A lot of people seem to really not like the Gen 9 designs. I'm somewhat in the middle. I believe some of the designs are absolutely awesome. And I believe some of the designs are a little weird, but not terrible in any sense. I believe what they were going for with Scarlet and Violet was absolutely fantastic. And I think some of the Pokemon really stood out to me. My personal favorite Pokemon from Generation 9 has to be Skillvillain, Skillvillian, however you want to pronounce it. It's the Pepper Dude. I caught him early on in the game as a Capsa Kid, had him on my team all the way up to the end of the game. Absolutely love this guy. He is freaking awesome. But the starter evolutions are also pretty cool too, and I believe there's just a large variety of different Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet that are really, really awesome. And a little bit of spoilers, guys, I really do like the Paradox Pokemon, the past and future Pokemon. I believe the designs are just super freaking awesome, super cool, and I think that Pokemon should continue to go with this thing. I mean, these kind of concepts, these past and future things, because we got the Hisui forms uh, earlier on in the year, and obviously now we're getting the past and the future forms in Scarlet and Violet. I think if they continue to do these types of Pokemon, I think it would just be really, really awesome. Alright, now let's talk about the world and gameplay. I know I forgot gameplay in the introduction. Again, I'm doing this completely unscripted. But uh, the gameplay and the world of Paldea. Let's talk about that. The gameplay is traditional Pokemon gameplay. Nothing really new about it besides terrestrialization, which in my opinion is a really cool gimmick because it gives every Pokemon uh, a chance to really shine with terrestrialization and it also brings in a lot more strategy. I mean, with Mega Evolution, Z-Moves, Dynamax, while I believe they were really cool, all they really did was give you that cool factor. With terrestrialization, you actually have to think about what you can do with that Pokemon's Terra type and how you want to approach using that Pokemon's Terra type. And I think that was really cool. It really gives a lot more strategy to the actual game. In my opinion on terrestrialization though, it's all right. I personally prefer Mega Evolutions and Z-Moves over it but I prefer Terrestrialization over Dynamax. Overall, a really cool gimmick, but honestly, I don't think it was necessarily needed in this game. I think they should have just brought back Strong Style and Agile Style from Legends Arceus. But again, that's just me personally. As for the world of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Paldea region itself, this was something I was a bit worried about, mainly because Pokemon, it's really, I just didn't expect the world to be that big and I didn't expect a lot to be in the world. And while there isn't a lot in the world, Paldea definitely did not disappoint from a world standard. It's big, it has many environments, and it's very expansive. I, I actually enjoyed exploring Paldea. I had a lot of fun exploring the region, which is something I honestly was really nervous about coming in to Scarlet and Violet. I was worried that the region was not going to be fun to explore, but my worries were quickly debunked when I opened up the game. The game is an absolute joy to explore, and I think Paldea is a great Pokemon region. My only criticism with Paldea is the towns and settlements. I do feel like they are a little bit lacking, you can't really go inside many buildings, which is honestly a shame, but at the same time, they were really more focusing on the world itself, and to make an open world game, I think they succeeded. I think this is a very good first attempt at an open world Pokemon game, at least from a world perspective. So yeah, Paldea is great, and the gameplay, it's just like Pokemon has always been. I wish it was more like the Legends Arceus gameplay, but again, those two games were made side by side, that being Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet. So yeah, the gameplay in the world is pretty good too. Alright, so now let's talk about the story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So, originally, when I was playing through the game, the story was it. I mean, I'd do a Titan, I'd do a Starbase, I didn't do a couple gyms, then I'd do another Titan, Starbase. And the Titan storyline and the Starbase storyline, they were interesting. I mean, Arvin was a cool character. I liked his story with his Pokemon and killing that Pokemon. And I really liked how Team Star was not your traditional evil team. They weren't evil. They were actually the good guys in this case. And they were just seen as the bad guys because of how they approached it. And I think that was really interesting. However, I wasn't really that engaged with the story until after I had 
you've gotten to the end of each story. I mean, the Titan storyline sets up the final storyline for the game, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, Victory Road is just pretty much Victory Road. It's the gym challenge and the rival battle. Very simple story, probably my least favorite, but still fun. It's always been fun to do the gyms, which in this case, the gyms are all right. The gym leaders are all right, but the story was pretty good and the league was a little disappointing, but again, story was pretty good. Then we get to Team Star with Penny, who has the best fucking battle theme in the entire game. I, I'm sorry, I don't care. I know a lot of people like the final boss theme more, but I love Penny's theme from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I think the finale to the Team Star thing was really cool, and I liked how Professor Clavel was, I'm sorry, Director Clavel was used throughout the game. I think him going undercover as Clyde was really funny. And it really goes to show you that he's just an old man who cares about his students and it's really wholesome. So yeah, the storylines were really cool, the three individual storylines, but when they all come together for the way home, that's when the game changes from freaking Pokemon to like another RPG. You have a party of four. You're going through this area that sounds like it has a near automata soundtrack. You're seeing Pokemon that should not be a thing, and then you get to Professor Turo Osada, and you learn that they are dead. They're gone. Nada. They're not here anymore. And instead, it's been an AI you've been talking to this whole time, which I think was really, really cool. And then you have that final boss, which is absolutely insane. I mean, it was crazy. It was honestly crazy. And the finale with the Maridon versus Maridon, or if you have Scarlet, Coridon versus Coridon, that was just so freaking awesome. I also really liked the dynamic between the three main characters of Scarlet and Violet while you were in Area Zero. Their interactions were really cool, really funny, really wholesome. And I think that was really awesome. These characters were really, really well written. And I think that shows in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The story overall was just really good, above average for a Pokemon story, but in my opinion, not as good as some of the other games. I personally still think that Black and White has the strongest story followed by Pokemon Sun and Moon. But yeah, Scarlet and Violet delivers an excellent story and I think it is definitely worth checking out when you are playing the game itself. Finally, we have reached the enjoyability category. And like all my other reviews, I can't answer this question for you. How much you enjoy a game is entirely up to you. Opinions are all subjective. You could hate Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you could love Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, or you could be a little bit in the middle like myself. But personally, I thought this game was a great step in the right direction for the Pokemon franchise, but it needed more time to be worked on to truly be something fantastic. In my opinion, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are fantastic Pokemon games held back by higher-ups, technical limitations, and an overall vision. Pokemon definitely knew what they wanted here. Game Freak definitely knew what they wanted to do with this game, but I feel like it falls a little short when it comes to like performance and stuff like that. But overall, really solid game, really fun game, and I can't wait for any sort of like DLC that comes out next year or whatever we're gonna get for Pokemon in the future. Pokemon is definitely going in the right direction. They just need to have more time to work on these games so they can truly be something special. So my final score for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a 7.5 out of 10. Really fun game, but the technical limitations and frame rate drops really hold it back for me as a game. And I'm not someone who normally cares about this stuff, but in my opinion, it's just, it was just really distracting. But overall, Scarlet and Violet are fantastic games, and I definitely think that if you are a fan of the Pokemon series, you should definitely check the games out. All right, everyone, well, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications to never miss an upload, and to share these videos with friends so they can come here and join me for my journey. With that being said, my name is Onolith, and I'll catch you guys next time.